This is not a story of a person from rags to riches. It is not even a story with a happy ending, but at least it has an interesting beginning. It is a kind of story where heroes become super villain. It is a story of a person who builds success on a shaky foundation that is power, glued through the element of manipulation and embezzlement and elevated to the table of billionaires but unexpectedly fell off. This is the rise and fall of Isabel dos Santos, a businesswoman who became the richest woman in Africa. Isabel dos Santos is an Angolan and was born on 20th April 1973 in Baku, Azerbaijan. She was the oldest daughter of Jose Eduardo dos Santos and her mother, Tatiana Kukanova, a Russian-born chess champion. Growing up, Isabel had a privileged childhood, living in various countries due to his father's diplomatic and political career. She spent her early years in Baku and later moved with her family to London, where she attended an international school. She later studied electrical engineer at King's College in London. After completing her studies, Isabel returned to Angola where she began her career in business. She initially worked as a project manager at Urbana 2000, a subsidiary of Jemba's Group, a construction company owned by her father. In 1997, she co-founded Miami Beach Club, a nightclub and beach resort in Luanda, Angola. She has been involved in various industries, including telecoms, oil and gas, banking, diamond, and other investments. Her investment in the telecommunication industry includes Unitel, Angola's largest telecommunication provider. She also has stakes in other telecommunication companies across the continent of Africa. She has a stake in Sonalgo, a state-owned oil company in Angola, and had interest in Banco BPI one of Portuguese's largest banks, as well as banks in Angola, such as Banco BIC. Additionally, she was involved in the diamond industry through her stake in the Swiss diamond company De Grisogono and had investment in other industries such as cement, media, and real estate. Despite her success in business, Isabel dos Santos has faced allegations of corruption and other illegal activities in connection with her wealth and business dealings. All these allegations were clearly mapped because her father was the most powerful man in Angola. Who is her father and how did he influence such enormous wealth creation? Isabel dos Santos' father, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, is a former president of Angola. He served as the country's president from 1979 to 2017, making him one of Africa's longest serving leaders. During his time in power, Angola went through significant political, economic, and social changes, including a long and brutal civil war that lasted from 1975 to 2002. Jose Eduardo dos Santos came to power following the death of Angola's first president, Augustino Neto. He inherited a country that was still at war with various armed groups, including the National Union for Total Independence of Angola and the South African Apartheid Regime. Dos Santos consolidated his power by forming alliance with other political and military leaders, introducing a one-party system in Angola. Under his rule, Angola's economy expanded rapidly and this was driven by the country's oil and gas reserves. However, the benefits of this growth were not equally distributed and many Angolans continued to live in poverty. He faced accusations of corruption and nepotism, with critics claiming that he used his position to enrich himself and his family at the expense of the Angolan people. After 38 years in power, Dos Santos stepped down in 2017 following an election won by his hand-picked successor, Joao Lorenco. Lorenco launched a campaign to root out corruption and nepotism in Angola, and this led to investigations and legal proceedings against several high-profile figures, including Isabel dos Santos. The investigations revealed that, in June 2016, 
Her father appointed her as chair of Sonango, the Angolan State Oil Company. In November 2017, Joao Lorenko, the new Angolan president, fired her just two months after being sworn into office in the wake of similar appointment of children of the president to key posts. While power was gradually drifting, investigators began getting closer and what had been carefully hidden for so many years was nearing its uncovering. This was the beginning of the end of Africa's richest woman. The fall of Isabel dos Santos began in late 2019 when a consortium of investigative journalists known as Luanda Leaks published a series of reports on her business dealings. The reports alleged that Dos Santos had engaged in various forms of corruption and embezzlement, including using her position to enrich herself and her family at the expense of the Angolan people. Following the publication of the Luanda Leaks, Isabel Dos Santos faced a series of investigations and legal challenges. In Angola, she was accused of embezzlement and money laundering, with authorities freezing her assets and issuing an international warrant for her arrest. In other countries such as Portugal and Netherlands, authorities launched investigation into her business dealings and froze her assets. Some of her business partners, such as Portugal businessman and banker Mario Leite da Silva, also faced legal actions in connection with their ties to Isabel dos Santos. As a result of these investigations and legal actions, Isabel dos Santos' fortune declined significantly. In early 2020, Forbes estimated her net worth at $2.1 billion, down from $3.5 billion the previous year. Later that year, she was no longer included in the Forbes list of billionaires. The fall of Isabel dos Santos also had political implications, as her father, former Angolan President Jose Eduardo dos Santos, faced criticism for allegedly enabling such corruption practices during his time in power. In 2020, the Angolan government announced that it had recovered $5 billion in assets linked to Isabel dos Santos and her associates as part of a wide crackdown on corruption and embezzlement in the country. Let's have a brief look at her investigations and prosecution in the next chapter. Isabel dos Santos, the former billionaire and former chairwoman of the Angolan state-owned oil company Sonago, has been the subject of multiple investigations and legal proceedings related to allegations of corruption, embezzlement, and money laundering. In December 2019, Angola's Attorney General's Office launched an investigation into Isabel dos Santos and her associates, freezing their assets and issuing arrest warrants. The Angolan government also began legal proceedings to recover assets allegedly stolen by Dos Santos and her associates. On 30 December 2019, the Luanda Provincial Court ordered the seizure of the personal bank accounts of Dos Santos, her husband Sindica Ducolo, and Mario Felipe. According to the Attorney General's office, the three business people entered into deals with the Angolan state through the company Sodium, a public diamond seal company, and Sonango, the state oil company. With these deals, the Angolan state suffered a loss of $1.14 billion. The court produced the document showing that the assets and many other owned by Dos Santos have been acquired using funds from two state-owned companies. In Portugal, where Isabel Dos Santos had significant business interests, the country's central bank and market regulators launched investigation into her role as the controlling shareholder of Banco BIC, a Portuguese bank. The investigations focused on allegations of improper management, lack of transparency, and non-compliance with anti-money laundering regulations. In January 2020, the Portuguese Attorney General's Office opened an investigation into a number of her operations after Ana Gomes a Portuguese member of European Parliament laid charges against her. Following the seizure, she assumed UAE as her official country of residence. Again in January 2022, 
the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists ICIJ, published a series of articles called the Luanda Leaks that exposed Isabel dos Santos' business dealings and alleged corruption. The articles revealed that dos Santos had allegedly used her position to enrich herself and her family at the expense of the Angolan people. In January 2021, Forbes removed her from the list of richest people in Africa since her assets in Angola and Portugal had been frozen. In February 2021, Isabel dos Santos was charged with money laundering, embezzlement and other offenses by the Angolan authorities. The charges were related to the allegations that she used her position as the head of Sonango to siphon off millions of dollars to offshore accounts. In March 2021, a court in Netherlands ordered the freezing of her assets in the country. The order was part of a wider investigation into alleged involvement in money laundering and corruption. In June 2021, Portuguese public prosecutor indicated Isabel dos Santos, her husband, and several associates for money laundering and embezzlement. The indictment were related to their alleged involvement in the mismanagement of Banco BIC, which led to the loss of millions of euros from the bank. On 18 November 2022, Interpol issued a warrant for her arrest. During the crackdown, Isabel's brother, Joseph Lomino dos Santos, was sentenced to five years in jail in Angola for transferring $500 million out of the country's sovereign wealth fund. This was a clear example of how things could go. On Tuesday 27 December 2022, Angola's Supreme Court ordered another preventive seizure of assets of Elizabeth dos Santos. The decision was based on documents from state oil company Sonango and mobile phone company Unitel, as well as information provided by Portuguese and Dutch authorities. Oxford professor Soris de Oliveira said, and I quote, She's been humbled. She's been cut down to size. It just shows that in a lot of these authoritarian places, economic power derives from political power, not the other way around. The moment you lose political power, you can't be hurt. You are vulnerable all over the world." Unquote. When economic power is built on a volatile foundation like political power, it is bound to collapse because political power is always time-bound. All her supposed hard work, perseverance and reputation has been despised and exposed to the highest degree. And just like that, she fell from grace to grass, from powerful to vulnerable. Thank you for watching to the end. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any new video we post. Check out other great videos on this channel. See you in our next video. Until then, have a wonderful day.